Hi there, Pride Plant Girl here. Um, I thought today I'd take you for a little tour around the, the garden here. Um, it's been a few changes since you uh, have seen this area last, and some of the biggest changes have been in this little space that I'm sitting in right now, so I think that's where we'll start. So come with me and let's see what's, what's new and what's changed in the, in the garden since you saw it last. So this is the area um, those of you that have followed my channel for, channel for a while will remember um, I uh, managed to get a good deal on these big pots last year and I planted them full of potatoes and this year I thought it would be really neat to have them full of um, melons and uh, squash and things like that and just have them spilling out over the buckets or the pots and uh, just have lots of room to sprawl and move. Um, I have also planted corn in each of these pots and uh, I have a trellis in here in each of them just to, to give the corn some support. It's a little bit open here so I may need to, to put some string around just to give it some support. Um, and there's a few flowers in each of them as well. So real quick I'm just going to take you through and uh, let you see what's in these, these pots here. Some of them are looking good, some of them not so much. The first uh, two pots here um, directly in front of me are cantaloupe. Um, this one right in front of us is Minnesota cantaloupe and there's also corn and nasturtiums in this and um, it's looking not too bad. It's flowering. Melons and watermelon um, aren't uh, a crop that I'm likely to have a lot of success with in my climate and my expertise but I like to try it and see. This one here is a, a French, I believe it's a French cantaloupe, um, what's it called? French Char Charente. Um, it's looking a little bit healthier to me than, than the Minnesota one. So we'll see how that goes. Next to, next to that one I have spaghetti squash and I put two in each of these containers here. Oh, and there's some onions that I just needed somewhere to stick them and again corn and you can maybe notice that uh, some of these I planted the corn inside the trellis and some around the outside and that's just depends on how many squash I put in and it'll give me an idea of what works better I guess uh, and then I have a pumpkin here this is baby jack mixed pumpkins I believe there's two plants there and when I grew these seeds before, they come in a pack, it's a mixture of different ones, and I think there was three or four varieties that I got out of them, so I'm not sure what these ones will be. Again, there's corn, and a um, little bit of Acidanthera is what that is. It's a, a flower, it'll flower later in the summer, so. Over on this row, this is a new rocket pumpkin. It's a nice bigger pumpkin and some corn and I put some acid and thera corms in this one as well but I've seen no action on those so they they might have been no good I'm not sure um, this I think is acorn squash what is it oh kabucha kabucha on that side and yeah, acorn on this side, so two different squash there. I'm not sure if they cross-pollinate. I probably should have done some research on that. Um, in fact, I'm just thinking, I think this one might have... Yeah, one was spaghetti and one was butternut on this side, so again, time will tell if that was a mistake or not planting these all so close. Um, and then I have watermelon in the pot I was sitting on in the one directly in front of it. So this watermelon, where's the tag? This one is black diamond. And it looks like I have a lot of growth there, but I actually have a potato coming up, which I have never had potatoes come back in my garden. And I changed out most of the soil in here and put some, some um, very raw compost um, hadn't been broken down really at all yet so I'm thinking that came off a peel and I haven't decided yet 
if I want to just yank it or leave it be, being that the watermelon probably isn't going to do that much for me anyways. And then there's corn and some nasturtiums in here. And this watermelon is the early Canadian. And I had grown all of these um, in those little grow bags, those woven bags. You may have seen me start them, some of my seeds in. And for some reason with this watermelon, I decided I was going to take the bag off. I know that's a no-no, especially with watermelon. They don't like their roots disturbed. I don't know why I did it. And it definitely stressed the plant. And you can see it's pretty much died off completely on top and is just coming back there. I threw a few more seeds in and just one appears to have germinated. Not sure where this is going to take me in this pot at all. But there's corn and nasturtiums in here as well. So um, the next thing I think I'll show you is the potatoes that I planted early on. I think I want to say April. I'll have to check back in my file. So I planted some early potatoes and um, I had put them in my cold frame and just was hoping to get a few early potatoes and I think these probably should have been ready to harvest if things had gone to plan, but they're not ready to harvest. Um, they have started to really take off in the last month, but there's I don't think there's any potatoes down in there yet and they're still looking pretty young and fresh. One of the plants is starting to flower. I don't know if you can see that there. So that is a sign that some maturity is happening there. So maybe in the next few weeks we'll get some potatoes out of those. I'd really like that. Moving past the pots. This is my uh, bed with it has peppers, eggplant, onions, carrots, and garlic in it. I think that's everything. So the garlic is a disappointment to me this year for how much came up out of the ground for what I planted, but the garlic I have is looking wonderful on top here. It's starting to get nice thick stems. So I think it's going to be really nice garlic. Um, it's only my second year growing garlic, so I'm still learning with that. And my peppers, they're doing well. I even have a few that have started to form peppers on them. Um, I have had a few cold nights where I've put um, jugs of water or actually put some cozy coats around them. Um, and there was a few nights where I covered the whole bed right over. But for the most part, they've been out exposed to the elements. They're flowering away. They're getting bushy, they're getting strong. They're looking good. The onions are starting to get bigger and stronger. And my daughter came out and actually thinned out my carrots and they're looking pretty nice as well. So I think this bed's looking pretty good. The egg planter down at the end, but they're, they're looking good. Starting to flower. Um, this little one here, I think is the patio baby eggplant. And it's, it's looking a little rougher. I think it got beat by the wind. We had some very strong winds here and I think that's what's happening with that. Um, the other two are looking good. The black beauty at the very end there is just, strong and gorgeous and healthy so I think we'll get some eggplant out of that. The bed directly behind it is potatoes. Um, these are red Norland potatoes and I have a little bit of lettuce in the front there just I need to harvest that and get it out of the way soon the potatoes are overtaking but these are looking great. filled right in. You may have seen me plant this bed of potatoes up. And then I have several pots um, of potatoes in back here. Most of these are carob 
or Caribe, I think is the correct pronunciation. One of these is Norland, the Red Norland. I think it's this one right here that's a little further along. But they're looking great. Just have to remember to water them. The pots aren't on any sort of watering. And I do have some zinnias planted in here, but they're just, just seedlings just starting to come up, so. There's my tomato bed. And it's looking fantastic. And the onions in this bed have been in here just a little bit longer and they're filling out even more. So they're looking great too. But yeah, the tomatoes. I'm really happy with these. And I even have few tiny tomatoes started. So I noticed my very first one over on the cherry tomatoes yesterday, I think. So I'll show you that in a minute. But no, these are the these are the ones that I transplanted right in the middle here on these tall stakes that I set out a little bit later because I'd lost a few due to cold and wind and I think actually some heat too, but they're catching up just fine. So you don't have to put them in super early. And then uh, these are the Japanese black trefelli and they're really interesting to see the different leaf shape. I've heard it talked about on different videos, but I don't know, something about seeing it in person just really, you really notice that different leaf on those. And then on the other side of that, can't really see, so maybe I'll take that cover off and then you can have a good look at what I have going on here. Okay, I haven't even seen these exposed in a long time. So this bed is a mixture of beans, carrots, more onions, broccoli and Brussels sprouts. And there's supposed to be cucumbers at the back, but I don't think that's gonna happen. There's actually supposed to be uh, kale at the front, but I'm pretty sure that's a weed. And there's a little bit of kohlrabi fighting its way there, but that netting is not helping it and gets beat by the netting. And when it gets exposed, the flea beetles find it. So it's just a bad situation there. But I have burgundy beans, blue lake uh, bush beans, black turtle beans in that far corner and I think yellow wax beans on the side and the Spanish ca candy onions. I believe these are Acadia broccoli, Imperial broccoli. And they're looking pretty good. I had to replant these. Some of them got knocked out by some frosts. I had a different cover on here and it just wasn't doing it. This is my first go at Brussels sprouts. And again, I replanted a couple. But I think they're doing pretty good. I'm not really sure because I don't really know what they're supposed to be doing, but that one looks good. These two are definitely behind, but. And one sad sad little cucumber seedling trying to make a go of it there so i don't know planted cucumbers in three beds none of them come up i usually just direct seed them and they usually come up this might not be my year for cucumbers and over here is radishes, peas, parsnips, beets. And I just did a little sowing of uh, spinach, but it hasn't come up yet. Oh, and some pak choy, which... Mm, I'm pretty sure that's all weeds where it's supposed to be pak choy right in the front there. So 
And again, the parsnips, I've just been kind of leaving it weedy as I determine what's, what's a weed and what's a parsnip. And honestly, I can never remember from year to year what parsnip seedlings look like for some reason. And I'm still not sure what I have in there. So hopefully some of those are parsnips. You'd think being that I planted them in straight rows, I'd be able to tell, but I can't. This almost looks like a poppy to me right here. I don't know. It's a mess in this bed. It needs mulch, but everything, nothing's big enough to really get mulch in here. Radishes have taken a beating from the flea beetles, but they're starting to look like radishes. Um, I'm trying to remember what variety there was. I think these are French breakfast in the front. I've never tried those before. And there was supposed to be um, Oh, what's it called? I want to say Easter basket, maybe, um, back here, but every time these ones come up, the flea beetles just mow them right down, and there's one sad little one right here with a flea beetle on it, so I don't think I'll get to try those. Cucumbers are starting to come up in this bed, if you can see those little seedlings. There's some weeds too, but that cucumber even has a true leaf, so that's good news. Two sowings of peas. I cannot remember the variety. I'll look it up, put it on the screen for you. So this is my second sowing here on this side, and the other side was my first sowing. And we just haven't had consistently warm weather this spring. Every time it seems to start to get warm, we get, it cools off again. So things just aren't, we're going from like really cold to like it's supposed to be in the thirties in the next few days here. So this just isn't really good weather for peas. So usually I can get a pretty good crop of peas going through here, but I don't think I will this year. Then I have beets going along here. And again, I have two varieties and I'll have to look it up, I can't remember. But flea beetles actually even tried to do their work on these, but the beets seem to have won. And they're coming in nicely. I've gone through and thinned them out once and I think I need to go through and work on them again a little bit here. On the other side of that bed is potatoes. Um, why can I not remember the varieties today? Um, this is a late, a later one. I cannot remember what it is. I'll have to look that up. Um, spinach in the front here, but uh, it just, I've pulled more spinach out that's bolted than that I've gotten to eat. And I think again, it's just the crazy up and down weather we've had. Uh, these are a couple more, um, Brussels sprouts. Um, the Brussels sprouts I'm growing are Jade Cross. These ones haven't been covered or anything, so, and it's a lot shadier here, so they're looking a little worse for wear. This was supposed to be corn in the back, but um, I actually tried to start these early in cell packs, and only two came up, and I put the rest of the seeds down hoping they'd germinate, but they haven't. And then this is my Russian blue potatoes coming in nicely and then uh, got some patio snacker cucumbers and some green zucchini here there's more cucumbers down the corner this is a new bed I just made it this year they're stuck in the middle here so we'll see how it does it's fairly shaded here I'm not sure these plants are going to like it here but they will get some sun once the once the sun moves around uh, the afternoon sun, they'll get that. So I think they'll be all right there. And this bed is just a disaster. This, the flea beetles have just taken over this bed. It's supposed to be broccoli, turnips and onions. And the broccoli is just looking horrible. 
and the turnips were beautiful one day and gone the next. So I'm going to wait till later in the season. That's what I wound up having to do last year. And I'll replant them. It's just, I don't know. They love the broccoli or the turnip starts and they just, I can't keep them off of them. And here is my cauliflower and cabbage. So I'll just pop the cover off and I'll give you a look under there. Okay, so the shadows are really kind of funny on this bed. It's just, just changing over from the the morning shadowiness to the afternoon sun right here and they just hit in a bad spot so hopefully you can see them. But this is my cabbage and even with the cover flea beetles but these are big enough flea beetles won't hurt them I don't think. They want to be forming heads. This is looks like gunma cabbage. I have a mixture in here. I think some is stonehead, some is some is gunma and some is Taiwan and yeah like this. This one here is stonehead. Some were planted later than others. I think they were all started at the same time pretty much but some were planted in later than others. This looks like Taiwan I'm guessing. It just has a little bit different leaf on it. Could be wrong. And there's weeds in here because I rarely lift the cover. And lots of dill, which I just let dill grow wherever it grows. And then moving down here is the cauliflower. And I have cheddar and freedom. I think this side of the bed that we're on here is freedom. Weeds. And then I think it's cheddar on the other side. They're doing pretty good. I'm happy with them. There's a few that are behind. The cauliflower seem to get nipped with some of the cold nights. I just had a like a harvest guard fleece over them. And um, we had a few nights that I think between the the wind maybe loosened up the fleece and just kind of got into some of the corners and got them a little bit. But the cabbage, they stood up to it quite well. Rhubarb is huge. It's looking great. I've had a few harvests off of that. Beside it is the uh, strawberries. And they're really just come into flower getting serious about that in the last week here. We've had a little bit of rain, so I think that's helped. It's a little shadowy here, but I don't, I don't know how well you'll see it, but these are the pots that I planted. I think I showed you in a video. There's one there and one over there, and these are cherry, cherry tomatoes. And I noticed yesterday, I already have one coming. Now this was out of a mixed pack, um, three different types varieties of tomatoes that it could be so I'm not sure what it is yet so time will tell on that and I don't know if you can see but I have a few little nasturtiums just popped in there so it should look nice coming out the sides these will get sun it's just the shed is blocking the sun right now but these get a lot of sun through most of the day so that's a look at uh, my garden this right now in uh, early June and Hope you enjoyed it and I'm pretty happy with the progress of everything right now. I think it's it's looking good. It's, it's uh, coming along really nicely and we've had some really weird weather so and I like to put things out early and start things early and as you can see it doesn't really I'm not sure it really gets me ahead of the game at all. It's just kind of a fun challenge for me to see what I can grow and and uh, and get going earlier on. Some years I do get a little bit of an earlier harvest if the spring cooperates, but there's been a long, drawn out kind of spring with lots of wind and cold nights and definitely not getting anywhere close to too many harvests yet. So anyways, I, I hope you enjoyed this uh, little look at my garden and uh, thanks for coming along and we'll see you next time. Bye.